Candidates. Yes, 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 it's that time of year again. It's election season here in the city of Flint, and we are going to try to talk to as many of the candidates that are running for the city council seats that we can between now and the elections, all right? So you guys stick around. Make sure you share this with your friends. It's also going to be available on WFLV 92.1 LPFM Flint on Sunday afternoons. We play it on Channel 17, and you'll find it online on our Facebook page as well as YouTube. So make sure you, you hit us up on our YouTube page, which is Spectacle TV. Subscribe so you get notices, and you'll know when we put this stuff up for you to see. My first guest this evening is the, the one and only, should I say that? The one and only Maurice Davis. Maurice, just say hello. Hello. How are everyone doing? <laughs> good to be here, Paul. Great. Good to be here. Well, it's good to have you. It really is. Yes. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to ask this question because it's one I ask everybody. I need you to just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, you know, I'm a native of Flint, Michigan. Born and raised right here in Flint, by the way. Oh, yeah? And uh, also I'm a musician, okay. a blues musician. And I got a burning passion for my city because, you know, I don't know if you know it or not, but a lot of people move around city, but I always, all my life, been on the north side. Okay. So I got a special passion toward the north side of Flint. And where we reside. And also, I'm a historic district commissioner with the city, as well as the president of the Neighborhood Association, the Historic Civic Park Preservation Association. Yes, and uh, I look forward to running and being a city council member. Yeah. So now let's, let's let me ask you this: How long have you been involved with the historic district commission? Uh, going on five years now. Five years. Now, what started that journey? What started that, uh, when Pastor McCathern up the street at Joy Tabernacle, he introduced, uh, along with Land Bank, some type of le legislation that deals with, actually, hardest hit fund dollars from the state. Actually, yeah, the state of Michigan. Okay. With Land Bank, in other words, the demolition of houses. And they end up being the shrinking of Civic Park, by the way. Well, I mean, isn't that kind of necessary for the, the city to move forward, or do you think it was by design? Well, it's necessary to, to, to I'll say, destroy blight and demo abandoned homes, but on the back flip side of that coin, you got to have rehab dollars to help the residents now become, you know, more viable fires maintaining now that you remove the blight. You got to have, and they owe the homes by being a historic district, so you need rehab dollars on the flip side. And it seemed to fall short on that side of the coin. As a council person, yes. do you think you have or will you have any control over the rehab dollars? If not, I have a bigger voice than I have now. As with being a historic district commissioner, mm -hmm. you know, land bank come before us all the time with writing in certain parts is locally protected historic properties. Right, right. So they have to get permission. So, you know, I speak to that every time they approach us about a demo. I always approach them about when have y'all started seeking hardest hit funds. You know, fires help rehabbing as well as Habitat and other organizations. Now, is that the charge of the Historic District Commission? I mean, is this what, yes. the, it, I mean, this is what they're supposed to be doing as well as finding people and, and making sure that people stick to the Historic District Codes? Yeah, the codes as well as we preserve historic properties. Uh -huh. Or resources, so to speak, and whenever possible, the re back in the day, I don't know if a lot of people know this. Civic Park was built by General Motors, right, right, right. And uh, it's it's only two in the whole United States, and uh, it have its own manual. And there used to be rehab dollars set aside for rehabbing properties over, even as far as painting your house. You know, you have to have permission to do anything on a historic right. property. Right. But now, as time passed, it seemed like the funding then vanished. So now it leads the residents to fend for their own because, you know, older homes is not up to 2017 code. And right. that becomes an issue. Right. And, I mean, if, you, if you're going to have to stick to, you know, how the house was in 1870, mm -hmm. how do you abide by those codes and stay historic? Absolutely. Well, you just use, like, materials. You know, like, slate is very expensive. Right. So, you know, everybody would probably understand and the, the price of slate. Back then, they used real material. The house that we own over there in Civic Park, it's, it's constructed. The frame is, is actually metal. Wow. It's not wood. 
And if you notice, the burn house is still standing. You catch a house on fire, they still standing over there in Civil Park. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. Okay. Yeah. So you really enjoy that work with the historic district? Yes, yes. All right. What are some of the other things? Uh, talk to me about the, the, the land bank. You did mention the hardest hit funds, yes. right? Yes. What do you mean? I mean, uh, um, are those made available to the city as a whole, or does no. each ward have to apply for them? No. How would you use the no. hardest hit funds? A uh, hardest hit fund is handed down from SHPO, which is State Society Preservation Association. Mm. What it is, it's funds that, to get demolition funds is because of the type of property it is. Okay. I don't know, a lot of people don't know, but a lot of that stuff over in, on the north side is contaminated, called brownfield. You know, from General Motors and what have you, such as University, okay. when Stanley was in office. But anyway, long story short, the funding is, is kind of, it's a restrictive funding, and it costs money. Each house that come down, I don't know if the residents are familiar, but it's 11500 to 25000 if it's abated with asbestos in it. So it's funding just particularly for what they call hardest hit fund, and it seemed to me, them the only dollars that most people go after them type of dollars, but it's, it's a shortage of seeking the rehab side of the dollars. And it helped, you know, to remove the blighted homes. But homes are already, they're always going to be continually blighted because nothing coming back that helps sustain the neighborhoods. And that become an issue. And it's, uh, I take it, an issue you want to um, undertake as a council person, right? Yes, especially for the North End. Because when you see all the rehab part that's taking place downtown, you have to ask yourself, is it two flints? What's going on? All the rehab, 21 million, we deal with the actual numbers of the rehab of the, because it's historic site, the, the actual, um, not the Whiting, but uh, Capital Theater, Capital 21 million. Right. But then again, zero dollars on the north side, that's an imbalance. And then when you speak to the fact, even over here on University Avenue, it comes to the associations that's over here, and then... You really can't cry foul because they'll say that Kettering helped or Hurley Hospital or DDA or some other funding that took place. But Northside have no one fending for them. So that's why I'm trying to be a voice for that side of town. Now, wait a minute now. Didn't the, just, uh, didn't the Mott Foundation just yes. rewrite all their stuff and yes. now they're focusing on the North Side? North Side, North Fifth Avenue. Yes. How is that working out? Not good at all. <laughs> oh, no. Not good at all. Now, me speaking, and I only can speak for what I see over in Civic Parking on the north side. Okay. They allocate actually $1.6 a year. And they say, get together and tell us what you want us to fund. And that's a beautiful thing they're doing. Right. So they had the meetings. One was held at Joy Tabernacle Church up the street, Chevrolet and Dayton. Mm -hmm. One, and some was held at the Burston Field House. I think I went to one at New Jerusalem. Hey, as well, in the community. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, seen to me, is the pillars of the community... <laughs> They write to 501c3s, and, and it, it sounds like it's a good unit because it's hard to give poor folks money that's broke. Mm -hmm. So I think the intent of roof mount is a beautiful thing, but it's not getting to the purpose of what needs to be done. Roofs need to be done. Windows need to be done. People need a lot of work on their homes, but it ain't going that direction. So they redirect it to what's popular as the word youth. A lot of people throw that around, but I don't see the... The youth get nothing but mowing yards instead of they really need to do more apprenticeship program. Right. I mean, skills. why can't uh, the kids fix the roofs? Absolutely. You don't see that done. So it becomes frustrating. Yes, they stepped up and gave funding to the north side, but it, then and again, we don't see it. And that would be one or another big pet peeve of mine if I was in that council seat. Now, I know you're over on um, Civic Park. Yes, Yes. Haskell is the heart of that community over there. What's yes. going on with that? Now, the issue with Haskell, that's very frustrating. The PAL program, as you know, every school on the north side basically is cl closed. I hear some pastors saying it's a food uh, desert. Mm -hmm. But I'm the one to say it's a knowledge desert over there for the kids because I'm right in front of Civic Park, Northern Close, Northwestern is, is, is well on the way, and all the other Everybody, history is getting, I went to Martin, it's gone. But I will say this, with Haskell Center, it gives the kids the only thing they have over there, opportunity 
to 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 learn an after school program mm -hmm. and and also academically they do a lot of stuff for the youth but it's ran by the PAL program and as you know it's been in media lately that the PAL program was under attack as if it was going to be taken away which was false that was false because I actually mediated that deal a lot of people don't know that between the city and the board Trishelle Young them and the board okay. and the mayor and police chief Tim Johnson and I spoke with the police chief as well as Trishelle and them and come to find out it was a, it was a misunderstanding of the minds but the chief reiterated they was never going to have not a PAL program. A high school was never in the threat of closing. Okay. But media, you know, they put it out as PAL was going to close. Man. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on in Flint. Why do you want to be a council person? Well, I got, you know, over in our district, is a lot of seniors. And uh, somebody got to be a voice. I'm the one to be a voice. I've been in Fires Music. And I've been withstanding music going on 45 straight years. Never mm -hmm. quit plucking a guitar. Okay. And uh, being a resident here, I'm still a resident. It ain't over till you quit. And I refuse to quit because people over there depend on me. Right. Even earlier as the day, a guy was telling me about the changing of the pipes. How, you know, he had a whole brand new slab of concrete. But now when he come home from Detroit... They wanted to infill it with a half a slab, and he very frustrated. So tomorrow, Beverly and I, we're going to deal with that thing. Nice. Um, I heard somebody say today, mm -hmm. they were talking about uh, putting the um, KWA, or the Detroit right. Water, on the ballot for the cities to vote for. Okay. For the residents to vote for. Right. Is that something you would support? And if so, why? If not, why not? Why would they put on the ballot if Jeff Wright is already, he the CEO of it, and they bring it online pretty soon in Flint Township, the mm -hmm. KWA. That was a usury type deal to me. It don't make no kind of sense. You know, because one thing about it, the suffering that started three years ago, it's, mm -hmm. it, it's never got diminished 0%. People over there still on bottled water 110%, Paul. And if truth be told, all these other municipalities such as, I'll go to say Grand Blank, they got brand new clean water. They got a whole different treatment system now. Everybody, at one time, I remember I thought Flint serviced the whole Genesee County. But ironically, now when you fall, you fall by yourself. People come into Flint, the dollars go back out of Flint, and we, set, we left struggling and suffering. So it don't make sense. We really need community members that really understand the hurt that this community is going through. Not political, actually know the pain. People over there is suffering. Now, you know, uh, Maurice, I've been downtown. Yes. 30 years. Yes. And I've seen them come and I've seen them go. Yes. And they all seem to have this one problem that they won't unite. How do you think your oh, stewardship easy. will get them to you? Now? I would say just like with Haskell. I'm always the type that stay focused. And what I, by me being in a band, everybody I, from Hustle Termination, I'm talking about 30 some years. Hunter Termination, my yeah. goodness. But what happened is, is this, you learn to mediate between people and always stay focused on the subject matter. I never take it personal. Okay. If I don't agree with you, Paul, we got to still stay focused on the subject that we're going to get along and never get to the point to where we become young kids and now the people are hurting, the community is hurting because we bickering. You always, some you win, some you don't. But as long as we can agree at the end of the day to move forward as a community, everything will work. And that's where the problem come in at. But how do you do that? I mean, the bottom line is how do you do that? If I think I'm right never take it personal. and you think you're right, right. And I get it my way. Aren't it's you? Called compromise. Uh, yeah, but aren't you unhappy because yes. it didn't go your way? Very unhappy. But still, I'm in the seat to represent not my Reese feelings, uh -huh. but the community. I'm the, the ambassador for the people I'm representing. Right. So if I'm not, if I ever lose focus of that, now here go a problem because now it's personally me, and I take it personal. No, I'm everybody that whoever vote me. If I get that seat, uh -huh. I'm sitting there representing them, so it's not personal to me no more. So I can't lose focus and take it for personal, and that's where the problem is. Maurice, take a moment, look at the camera, and encourage people to vote for you. Tell them how they can get a hold of you, if they want to help you with your campaign. What do you want them to do? This is what I want you to do. If you're a resident of, of Flint, and you know, another thing too, Paul, any resident of Flint, I tell people this all the time, because if I get at the table, you're not speaking just the second ward, just the civic park. You're speaking to the city's issue. 
And so what I would say is this. August 8th, if you tired of political politician that politically correct with constituents, I'm not trying to be a politician or start learning all this big lingo of being a, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Bureaucrat. Yeah, real cat. Say it, I can't. Bureaucrat. Real cat. I can't even say the word. But I am a resident that's fed up, that's representing residents that's fed up. And we need to unite. I would love for you to come on board to help this movement because we are a movement over there. Right now, if you ride by Civic Park School, I'm the one that most Civic Park School. Ain't got nothing to do with Genesee County, you know, Land Bank have a clean and green. No. I've been doing that ever since Civic Park closed. Mm -hmm. No funding. I'm the one who keep all of the islands over there by us. I would just have to encompass all the way over the Pearson Road, the boundaries wow. of Civic Park. But the neighbors been requiring my reason. If somebody breaking the house, they call me. And then I would call, you know, and oh, they don't know what. All right, give them a number. Give them my address. The number is 810-234-6366. 810-234-6366. That's my number. And the address is 1313 West Dayton Street, right there where the bus and the truck's at. <laughs> Y'all see all that stuff around the corner of Forest Hill and Dayton. I'm not a... Um, let me say, part-time politician. No. Right. I'm a resident, and I, we deserve better than what we get. All right, we're out of time. You guys are watching Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. Don't go away. There'll be more sooner or later, I'm sure, after this. Okay? Stick around.